just get yourself nice and comfortable. Perfect. Get nice and comfy. Sorry about that. Technical difficulties. Just going to take a moment. Just letting the knees relax outwards. Sitting nice and tall. And just start to connect to our breath here. And just start to observe your breath once you're comfortable. Let the arms rest wherever they're comfortable. And we've just got a small theme for today, which is samskara. In yoga philosophy, samskara or thought impressions are the patterns we adopt and repeat over a lifetime. The concept of samskara explains that every action leaves a record in the psyche, like footprints in the snow. These records can be positive or negative. You can think of the positive samskara as a groove, a good habit that repeated regularly leads to good outcomes. So engaging in healthy behaviour like eating well and exercising, yoga, is a good groove to be in. But other habits are perhaps not useful grooves, but instead ruts. These ruts cut deeply and follow without a chance of deviation. They can be harmful. While healthy behaviours can have a life-enhancing benefit, we want to ensure that it doesn't change from a groove to a rut and become harmful. So for example, some of the moves we make in our physical practice of yoga, for example, the Chaturanga Dandasana, where we come down from high plank to low plank, um, it can be helpful in small doses, but harmful when practiced too much over time. It's really common, shoulder injuries are very common in uh, yoga practitioners. So our practice can form either a groove or a rut. Self-study and attention to whether our habits are currently helpful are key here. So let's come back to the breath for a moment. Just taking a moment to notice what the breath's doing. Where the breath's beginning in the body. And where does the breath land? Just open your eyes, look along the floor. We're going to come into a tabletop position. So set yourself up with the hands under the shoulders and the knees under the hips. And just start by lifting your belly here, bring up the support to your spine. Spreading your fingers nice and wide, we're going to circle the hips in one direction. And the bigger the circle, the more we get a bit of a stretch and movement into the wrists and into the shoulders. And then pausing here, let's circle the other way. Change in direction. Coming back into the centre, we're just going to take the knees a little bit wider, bring your seat to your heels, so we're sitting back into child's pose. Let the arms come forward and rest your forehead down on the floor. So balasana or child's pose. So here the legs are deeply folded. The weight of your body dropping down into the floor. The arms, your torso should feel quite heavy. The belly, just let it go. Let it hang down. You need to draw in the legs. Just notice the, it's a grinding pose, so all the points of contact on the floor, so the length of the shins, the tops of the feet, all pressing downwards. Forearms, hands, the forehead, all dropping down, grinding us at the start of our practice. Let's bring a little bit more attention back to the breath. make the in-breath and the out-breath of equal length here. So if we're breathing in for the count of three, we're also breathing out for the count of three. Inhale, one, two, three, and exhale, one, two, three. Breathing in. 
Start doing a little bit of Ujjayi breath in. And then you ask you to work this breath. It's a warming breath, a meditative breath. You sweep the breath along the back of the throat as you breathe in through the nose. And as you exhale, a deep sigh, keeping the mouth closed. It's a noisy breath. Inhale. And exhale. On the next in breath, let's come back into that tabletop position. Coming through into cat and cow. So for cow pose, the belly presses down, upper chest lifts, look up, stick your tailbone back. When you're ready to breathe out, scoop the belly to the spine and look back towards your thighs or your navel. Inhale to cow pose. Exhale, round your back to cat stretch. Breathing in to cow. Breathing out to cat. And just let each pose last the length of your breath. And one more breath takes us back into the centre. Just have a look down at your hands. Make sure the fingers are spread nice and wide. Index fingers face forward. And we're going to bring some weight forward, tucking the toes under and coming into our first downward facing dog. So start by lifting the knees off the floor. Push back from the hands, let your head drop down first, and then start to lift the tailbone nice and high. So downward facing dog, Adam Kashvanasana. Shake your head out, yes and no. Lengthening through the arms, lifting up through the armpits. Just coming back to your breath here. So the back of the legs feel tight, go ahead and bend the knees as much as you need to. And your heels are not very close to the floor. and bring your weight forward till your shoulders are above the wrists. Walking your feet further back to a nice long straight plank. Drop down to the knees and let the tops of the feet rest down on the floor. Bend your elbows and lower all the way down. Once you're fully down, press the tops of the feet firmly down. Squeeze the thighs, squeeze the butt, lift up your chest and then looking forward, lift your hands, baby cobra. Hands come down to the floor. We're going to round back so you can come through Balasana or come straight back to Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. Let's settle here for a few breaths, making any adjustments you need to. So the hands pressing into the floor. Gently tuck your chin to find the length through the neck. Belly draws in tightly. Legs are really quite firmly engaged here, and heels, if you can, just releasing them out and down towards the floor. We're going to roll forward to plank again. So tuck your chin round right through your spine, coming into the plank position. You can stay here on the toes with me or drop to the knees. Bending the elbows to stop halfway down, Chaturanga Dandasana or to the floor and come through to upward facing dog or baby cobra. Squeeze your butt tightly, look up and then pressing back to downward facing dog. We're going to take a couple of breaths here, resetting. Just feel that opening through the back of the body, the back of the legs. Limbering up through our warm up, bending both knees, walk your feet in behind the hands. So once you're there, your feet are going to be hips distance apart. Looking forward first and then exhale, folding over the legs. Now here we keep a slight bend in the knees and you might like to bring your arms into a ragdoll, holding each elbow in your palm, letting that extra weight of your torso 
stretch you out here. Tuck the chin again. Come back to your breath. You might like a little sway here. Releasing your hands to the floor, tuck your tailbone down and we just very gradually round back up through the spine till we're standing nice and tall, square knee to and on the camera. Alright. I might have to squat. <laughs> it's a problem with your device not working. The last minute. There we go. Alright. So we're going to start to move further over, bringing the feet together for Tadasana, mountain pose. So we want to broaden out through the feet. Have a look down, spread each, ten, each of your ten toes nice and wide and press them firmly downwards into the earth. Now the legs are going to be very active here. So we lift up through the kneecaps, we engage the thighs, pressing through the feet, tucking your tailbone downwards. Now the weight's going to be just over the front of the heels. We lift up through the torso, so your lower ribs are nice and lifted. Bring your hands, uh, your thumbs into your armpits, lift up through the chest and then release your hands by your side, reaching down through that middle finger and gently tucking the chin to gaze, just to the tip of the nose here. See if we can come back to the breath again. So maybe the Ujjayi breath is for you today, maybe it's not. Just do what feels right for you here. Coming into our half sun salutation, see if we can squeeze into the shot. So we're going to inhale, lift the arms overhead, look up, and then exhale, bending the knees, folding forward, Uttanasana. Inhale, slide your hands to the shins, look up and lengthen, and then exhale, folding again, Uttanasana, forward bend. We rise tall, standing, arms come wide and to the top, look up, and then exhale, hands to heart, Samastiti. So we're going to repeat that again, inhale and lift, Urdhva Hastasana, exhale, knees bend, Uttanasana, let your head hang. Inhale, look up and lengthen. Exhale, folding forward, Uttanasana. And then we're going to stand tall again, Urdhva Hastasana. And exhale, Samastiti. Surya Namaskar. That's even worse. <laughs> I thought that would work. Surya Namaskar. Well, don't you see my feet? So we inhale, lift the arms overhead. Exhale, folding forward, Uttanasana. Inhale, look up and lengthen. Exhale, take a step or a jump back and Chaturanga Dandasana, high plank to low. Inhale, through to upward facing dog, squeeze the butt, look up. And exhale, downward facing dog. We're going to stay here and take a few breaths. Coming back to the breath again, inhaling and exhaling. Breathe in and out. Make any adjustment you need to in your down dog. Another breath in. As we exhale, bend the knees to look forward. We take a step or a jump to the front of the mat. Inhale, look up and lengthen. And exhale, soft knees, Uttanasana, forward bend. Rising tall. Take your arms wide and to the top. And exhale, Samastiti. Same move. Inhale, lift, Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale, Uttanasana, forward fold. Inhale, look up and lengthen. Exhale, step or float back, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, upward facing dog. 
exhale downward facing dog. Staying here, take a few breaths. I'm trying to find a bit more seat floor. Breathing in. And out. Just looking for that balance between effort and ease here. So for some of us, down dog feels like a pose of rest at times. If it's too much, please feel free to come down to the last a child's pose at any time. So breathing in. As we exhale, bend the knees, look forward. Take a step or jump to the front of the mat. Inhale, look up and lengthen. Exhale, folding forward, Uttanasana. Standing tall, soften the knees on the way up. Urdhva Hastasana. And exhale, Samasthiti. We're going to go for one more. Inhale and rise, Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale, Uttanasana. Inhale, look up and lengthen. Exhale, step or foot back, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, upward facing dog, press the tops of the feet down, exhale, downward facing dog. Taking a few more breaths here. So that constriction at the back of the throat, that's what gives us the ujjayi breath, sweeping the breath to the back of the throat. Deep sigh as you exhale. So breathing in. Preparing. Exhale, bend the knees, look forward, take a separate jump to the front of the mat. Inhale, look up and lengthen. Exhale, fold and deeply. Uttanasana. Standing tall. Urdhva Hastasana. And exhale, hands to heart. Samasthiti. Perfect. Here we're going to step or jump the feet to hips distance apart for Padangustasana. So we're going to bend the knees, bring your hands onto your hips, lean away, and then we're going to hinge forward. Bringing the hands towards the floor or on the legs, if you have the space to. Hook two fingers around each big toe and then press the toes down. Inhale, look up and lengthen. And exhale, fold and deeply over the legs. Parangustasana. Bend the knees as much as you need to. Crown of the head dropping down towards the floor. If you'd like more challenge, try lifting the tailbone rather than straightening out the knees. Take a breath in, looking forward, slide the hands up towards the shins, and as we exhale, we're just going to round back up to the top through the spine. Take your feet nice and wide. I'm going to set up for our little warrior sequence here. So turning your toes, coming to one side, whatever works best for you with the screen. So this knee is going to come over the ankle, and your back foot, you want to turn it outward slightly so the heel's pressing out and turning your hips to the side for warrior one. So that might mean picking up this leg and walking it a little bit wider. Let's re-bend into that front knee, lift the arms overhead, and as you exhale, bend a little bit deeper to the front leg, tucking your tailbone down and taking your gaze or your drishti upwards towards the hands. So as the tailbone drops downwards, creating a bit more length through the torso. Keep 
keeping that support of breath going. And a nice long straight leg at the back. Now take a breath in, release your arms, and the arm that's on the same side as the leg that's back is going to wrap under, so we're making eagle arms here. Press the palms together, or it might be the back of the hands, or anywhere that you're crossed, and then bending back into that knee, lift the elbows up as you breathe in. As you exhale, bring your chest to the inside of that thigh. Then let your head go, let the neck relax. This is a variation on Badavira Bhadrasana, it's known as Devotional Warrior. Try and distribute the weight evenly between your feet. Are your legs shaking? Mine are. So one breath in, brings us all the way back up to the top. We're going to sweep the arms behind us, lace your fingers together, and then just start to bring your weight in and lift the back leg for Vira Bhadrasana 3, Warrior 3. So the chest dives forward, squeeze your butt to lift the leg, and try and square your hips towards the floor. Don't forget to breathe. So the standing leg stays bent. If you do want more challenge, start to straighten it out. One more breath in. As we exhale, release the hands to the floor and come into standing splits. So bring your head towards the front shin and levering the back leg up. Now it might not come much higher, but see if it wants to. Standing splits. Take a breath in to lift the head. We're going to land the back foot and take a step back, taking a vinyasa. So Chaturanga Dandasana, or you can rest in child's pose. Upward facing dog or baby cobra. Exhale, pressing back, downward facing dog. From here, we're going to complete the vinyasa. Bending knees, take a step or jump to the front of the mat. Inhale, look up and lengthen. Exhale, folding forward, Uttanasana. And we rise, Urdhva Hastasana. And exhale, Samastiti. We're going to take this to the other side now. So I'm going to stay facing the front and turn the other way. So just make sure you're on the other leg for Vida Bhadrasana 1, Warrior 1. Maybe walking your foot outwards, outside edge, the back foot down, turn your hips. Let's lift the arms up, tuck your tailbone down, and just see where we can go. So we're searching for more length through the front of the body, opening out through the chest, tilting the tailbone downwards will give you a nice lengthening to the back of the body. The breath always supporting us. So your next breath in, release the arms down. So again, it's the same arm as the leg that's back, is the one that wraps under, and bring your palms together or the back of the hands. When you're ready, inhale, lift the elbows first. As you exhale, come forward. Bring the chest just to the inside of the knee there. Press firmly into both feet. Can you lift the arch in your back foot? So the weight's on the back edge. Devotional warrior. So 
to our next breath in. We just come back up to the top, releasing your arms, take the hands behind the back, clasp the hands, lift your chest, bend into the front knee and shifting your weight in, let's come to Veda Bhadrasana 3. Here we want to brace your abdominals really tightly. Take your gaze towards the floor. Pushing away through the toes at the back. If you're on carpet, this might be a little bit tricky. So our next breath in, release the hands to the floor. Let your head drop down to that front shin and lever the back leg up, standing splits. Taking a couple of breaths here. Land in the back foot. Down, we're going to take another vinyasa, or you're welcome to sit back into down into balasana. So chaturanga dandasana. Coming through, roll over the toes, upward facing dog, pressing back, downward facing dog. From here, we're going to bend both knees into a deep crouch, knees just off the floor, and then lifting your tailbone high. We're going to keep the heels lifted, press back from the hands, and then just start to release your heels downwards. Let your head relax, finding length through the neck, through the whole spine. Keep lifting up through the belly. I'm just going to turn around so you can see better. We're going to take the any leg, I'm going to say the right leg, up into three-legged dog. Now we're going to open out the hip here. So the knee comes wide, the foot's reaching over towards the opposite shoulder. And then we come through. So we're going to land the knee between the hands or close to the wrist for a pigeon pose. So sliding the other leg long, Flexing the feet on the front leg. Lift up through the chest and let the weight of your hips drop down towards the floor. So, pigeon pose. Ekpara Raja Kapotanasana. To give it its full name. So as we exhale, just start to walk your hands forward. Allow your chest to drop close to the floor. Maybe your forehead can drop down or... Rest on the hands. Just see if there's anywhere you can let go further here. Maybe dropping the hip on the long leg closer towards the floor. And just observe what you're feeling here. So for me, I'm getting a nice stretch into the glutes as well. Just looking to loosen up in and around the hip. Just allow the weight of your body to stretch everything out. Let's take a breath in, walking back up till the hands are under the shoulders. And then walk the hands slightly forward. You're going to take the arm that's opposite to the leg that's bent and thread it through. Now you can stay here on the elbow. If it feels right, you can come all the way down to rest onto the shoulder. Maybe turning your head to rest the head down. You can feel that extra weight come into the hip. So we won't stay here too long. In breath brings us back up onto the hands. To come out of this, we're going to tuck your back toe, lift the knee off the floor, pressing back from the hands back into downward facing dog. So here, let's walk our dog, lifting one heel at a time. 
Remember our foundations of our down dog, spreading the fingers wide, always pressing back so you've got a nice straight line from the wrists to the shoulders. We'll try and create a little bit of space between the shoulders and the ears. So we're ready to come to the other side. Whichever leg you haven't already done comes up for three-legged dog. It's straight at first, so you can let your head drop down and then bend the knee, opening out through the hip. So we're stretching one way and then we'll be going the other. So bring that foot over to the opposite shoulder and then the knee comes through to land down close to that wrist for a pigeon. Crack, that's me. First of all, we sit nice and tall. So adjust anywhere you need to. If that knee doesn't feel right there, just bring it into a place where it's comfortable. Maybe you can lengthen that leg out even more, letting the top of the foot relax, allowing your hips to drop down the weight, dropping down into the hips. And then breathing in. As we breathe out, walk your hands forward to extend your pigeon. to notice how this side differs perhaps to the other side. It's really common for the hips to be really quite different from one side to the other. Every breath out letting you relax deeper into the stretch. We hold a lot of tension in and around the hips. It's said that we hold emotions in the psoas muscle. Let's try and stay a little bit longer when we're stretching these large muscles out. breathe in we're going to walk up onto the hands bring the hands under the shoulders initially so we can get that weight back into the hips and then they come slightly forward whichever way you didn't already go so I'm going to thread through to the back this time the arm comes through palm up and then you might want to stop here on the elbow or let yourself go all the way down to the floor so resting the shoulder on the floor if it feels comfortable and if not just stopping at the elbow Again, it's just going to be different for everyone, and it might be different from side to side. Any discomfort at all, just come back up to where it feels right for you. When you're ready to breathe in again, let's push yourselves back up, spreading your fingers nice and wide again, tucking the back toe and pushing back. First, your downward facing dog. Let's take a vinyasa. So tuck the chin in, roll forward to your high plank. Chaturanga Dandasana, halfway or to the floor. Inhale, roll over the toes, lift up, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. And here we're just going to bend the knees, take a step or jump through to a seated position. So wherever it feels right for you there. Setting up for Dandasana, stick or staff pose. So first of all, walk each sit bone back one at a time. Your legs are going to be very active here. So we flex the toes back towards the shins. Thighs are really firmly engaged. Hands come by your side. So just in line with the hips, press down into the hands, fingers face forward if that feels comfortable. And here we want to engage our bandhas, the energetic seals in the body. This is the great lock, Maha Bandha. So the Mula Bandha, we draw the pelvic floor up and brace it. Uddiyana Bandha is the navel drawing tight to the spine. And finally we use the chin lock, Jalandhara Bandha. So first of all, lift your chin up to the ceiling. 
And as you exhale, drop the chin tight to the chest. So your gaze will be down to your thighs. This is where our Ujjayi breath really is useful because we have that constriction in the throat. And the idea of this is to trap, lock the prana in the body. And the prana is a life force, not, what, not the breath itself, but what gives you the will to breathe. So as we breathe in, let's release the locks here, lifting the chin up first and then resetting. We're going to take the right leg in, bring the foot close to um, the heel close to the hip and then let the knee go outwards. So the sole of the foot rests against the long leg for Janu Shirshasana. I like to walk my sit bone back. It just gives me a little bit more lift and drops it down, turning your chest towards the long leg, big toe. Inhale first and as you exhale, just come over the leg. So Janu Shirshasana translates to knee to face pose. So in our case, we're just going to try and bring face towards the knee. Depending where you are, your drishti or your gaze can go to the big toe if you're higher. And if you're lower, just let your head drop towards the shin. Coming back to the breath. When you forget the breath, just acknowledge that. Bring it back when you remember. as we breathe in, lift up the chest first and taking the leg just up where it was, we're going to bring the heel even closer to the hip. And then we want, I'll turn a little bit so you can see it, we want to create a space between the foot and the thigh that's about a hand span. So we're going to have space to make a bind here. Take your hands behind you, lifting up through the chest and then taking the arm that's on the same side as the bent leg, reach it as high as you can, create space. Now reach as far forward as you can, your sit bone will probably lift off the floor and then bring the arm around, we're going to bend the elbow to reach the hand behind you. Now that might be enough but if you'd like to try the bind, reach your other arm forward first, again creating length and space. And then bring the arm round and see if you're able to clasp the hands together at the back. Inhale, lift your chest and exhale, come forward. Now, if you don't have the bind, that's okay. The intention to bind is enough. Smart chasana A. So it's chest, just resting down over the thighs hinge from the hip. On your next breath in, release the bind, lift your chest, and we're going to shift the weight into sit bones. I'm just going to turn to the side if you can see. So shift your weight into your sit bones, lift the feet off the floor. And we're going to come into Navasana, boat pose. So bring your knees directly, um, so bring your shins parallel to the floor. And we want to stay really lifted up through the upper body here. So bring your thumbs to your armpits, lift up through the chest, drop the shoulder blades down your back. And then just reaching your arms forward in line with the shoulder, Navasana. So brace your abs really tightly here. If you'd like more challenge, let's try extending the legs. And then I want you to make sure that you stay lengthened through the spine here. So try not to curve away. Imagine I'm drawing you up by the hands if I'm standing in front of your feet. Breathing in. And breathing out. If you need to at any time, you can tap the toes down to the floor or keep the shins parallel to the floor. So wherever you are today is fine. 
As we exhale, cross the legs at the ankles, take hold of the feet, and we're just going to come forward and take a vinyasa. So hands to floor, take a step and jump back, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, upward facing dog, you're welcome to sit this out. <laughs> exhale, downward facing dog. And then we just bend the knees, take a step or jump through to seated. Coming to Janusha Shasana on the other leg. So if you remember which leg you were on before. Taking that in, sole the foot somewhere against the leg. Let that knee relax downwards, turning the chest towards the thigh. Breathe in, and as we breathe out, let yourself come forward. Next breath in, lifting your chest. We're going to set up from our chest, that A again on this side. So we just bring the knee upwards, slide the heel close to the hip, and just make sure you've got that hand span again. Should be a bit quicker this time. So we lift up, lean forward, arm comes back, and bend the elbow to reach the hand behind you. Create space by reaching forward first. That's going to give you the best chance of making the bind at the back. If the bind feels really easy for you, try clasping the wrists instead. That's for those long arms only. breath and release your bind. We're going to transfer the weight to the sit bones again. We're going to take a final vinyasa. Taking a step or jump through. Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Take a step or jump through to seated. Once you're there, let's bring the soles of the feet together, allowing your knees to relax outwards. Reach your hands forward and we're just going to gradually one vertebra at a time, gently lower yourself to the floor. And if you need to support yourself on the arms on the way, feel free. Once you're there, take your arms overhead, Supta Baddha Konasana. Start to let go of the breath a bit here, the breath control. Come back to your natural breath. Just noticing how lifted the chest is and how easy the breath is. Now let your arms come down by your sides, turning the palms up. And you can keep the legs here or lengthen the legs out as you start to relax into Shavasana. So just make sure you're as comfortable as you can be. Let the weight of your body start to drop down into the floor. The essence of our Shavasana is to Bring us complete balance in all directions. We also want to find a balance between a state of being alert and at the same time relaxed, calm and removed. Align your body so it's symmetrical. Let the breath go. And leave everything as it is right here in this moment.
very gently. And slowly start bringing a little bit of awareness back to your body now, bringing a little bit of movement to the fingers, the toes, to the wrists and ankles. What sort of stretch do you need on your way back up? Maybe stretching out long or hugging the knees into the chest. Releasing the lower back. When you feel ready, just roll into one side and come up and join me sitting. Just make sure you're comfortable. Let your arms relax somewhere on the legs. Just allowing the shoulders drop down from the ears. Just take a moment to notice how relaxed you feel and how you still the body. Bring your hands together to the heart centre, from my heart to yours. Namaste. Thanks very much for joining me.